All right, guys. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for coming to College Application Crash Course Part 2. So I know a number of you were here for part one back in May, and I'm hoping that um, some of you guys were able to institute some of the things that we went over. I missed y'all this summer. I wanted to talk to y'all so bad, but we've been talking about all this self-care stuff. And uh, so I had to make sure that I got some rest this summer. After that year and a half that we just had, it was just crazy. But I'm trying to act like y'all weren't there. Y'all were there. Um, so... Uh, some of you guys dropped in the chat before we got started of what you've been doing this summer. So some people have been going to the pool and beach and dancing and Netflix and sleeping and working and taking classes. And that's wonderful that you guys, some of you guys were, you know, trying your best to be productive um, in whatever way is, you know, fair for you. And so, you know, I'm just hoping that whatever you did, you got some rest or you made some progress in what you were doing, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I hope that no one decides that they wanna cut their grass right now. Cause that is normally what happens when stuff starts to pop off, all right? So of course, if you guys have any questions at all, you can put them in the chat. So today, um, we're going to talk about the Narstown process. I have 5,000 commas in here. <laughs> Too late to fix that. Um, college fit, which we talked about a lot last year, um, and random things. And so college fit, again, is what you are looking for that will make a college um, be a nice choice for you. There's no such thing as, I'm not going to say that there's no such thing as the perfect choice, but there are a number of great choices. So I don't want you guys to get so consumed with picking a college that you feel like you have to make sure you pick the right place. You really just wanna make sure that you didn't pick the wrong place to be honest, okay? All right, so very quickly, you guys are familiar with this information. We will be using Schoology again this year. And so um, the senior Access code, emphasis on seniors. Um, so I know most of you guys on here are seniors. And so we'll use the same um, account that we used last year. And if there are any juniors and sophomores on here, there are your access codes. There is a freshman access code, but I don't really think any freshmen are on here today. But if you happen to be, because I know everybody on here. Um, but if you happen to be on here, we'll get that later for you. And of course, you guys know about the YouTube page and the website. It looks like it just disappeared. I don't think I edited these slides as well as I thought I did. I hope there are no surprises in here as we go through. I thought I caught that. It's probably somewhere at the bottom. Um, but you guys know about the school website um, that we have, and I will drop that in the chat for you at some point, all right? Now, there's been some movement in the guidance office, whether you knew or not. How many of you guys knew that there was some movement in the guidance office? Drop it in the chat, yes or no for me, real quickly. Yes or no? All right, so Layla says she does, okay. Anybody else? And hold on one second. Somebody's trying to get into this um, event today. All right, hold on one second. So just go ahead and continue to drop those items in the chat for me. So there's been some movement in the guidance office. And while I'm looking for this email to send to this parent, I can tell you what the changes were actually. Um, so Mr. McNamara will be at Stewart this year. So if you have Mr. McNamara um, last year, and they did do some kind of movement because they're trying to balance out some things, and they did add a new counselor this year. So um, Mrs. Harbaugh took over um, his caseload, okay? So you'll see that Ms. Harbaugh's in. If you don't know Ms. Harbaugh, she has been around for a while, and she is really good. So she will take care of you guys. Um, Mr. Marsh, you'll see, is a new 
counselor. He came to us from Stewart Middle School. So he's been in our district for a long time, um, but he's been in the middle school. So he's going to be coming on. So if you see your um, alphabet there, check that out. And then Mrs. Wiegand is also going to be with us here at the high school. So guys, just take a couple of seconds and you know look to see, um, you know, just take some time and look to see who you are assigned to. Now, what we will not be able to talk about, unfortunately, we will not be able to talk about scheduling um, tonight. So just check your email either on Thursday or Friday or Saturday, Sunday, I'm not quite sure. And our new assistant principal will send you guys an email with some instructions. So unfortunately, we won't be able to talk about that tonight. Okay. All right. Now, um, if you guys can do me a favor sometime tonight, sometime tomorrow, some of you may have filled this out already, but we do have a senior survey that I would love for you guys to fill out. I'm pretty much the only person that sees it. Maybe one of the principals will see it. Um, and it's just some more information that I can gather from you guys so that we can help best um, put together a nice college list for you and maybe look at some schools that best fit the needs of what you have. Some of the questions that you may see on there may appear to be intrusive and you're like, why are you asking me these questions, right? Um, did I have free lunch or do I live with my aunt or my grandma? Was I in foster care? Something like that. Those are questions that are actually on the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA, that you will be filling out. So for some of you who have some special cases, if I know those things ahead of time, I can check out some schools for you that have services that you need. So you guys can either get your phones and hit this QR code, or you can go to this website and fill out the survey. And I'll put it back up again at the end, okay? All right, now here are some upcoming events. So with the COVID again, um, there's not going to be any national college fairs. Over the last 10, 15, 20 years, they've had these um, college fairs um, through the NACAC organization. That's the National Association for College Admissions Counseling. And there's always this huge college fair downtown in Philadelphia at the convention center. So um, we will not be having that again this year. So I highly recommend that you sign up for this college fair. And it would have been nice if I actually put the link on here. Mm, that would have been really nice, right? So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to find that link for you and put that in the chat for you. Um, but this particular college fair, some of you guys um, participated in this last year and these college fairs will give you an opportunity to meet with a lot of colleges um, across the country. All right. So you really want to make sure that you take advantage of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat for you. Copy. And let me put that there. All right. So there is the link right there. So it's virtualcollegefairs.org slash events. And so again, this college fair is going to be everywhere, 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 everywhere. So this is what the link looks like. And so when you go into the account, you're gonna go in and register and you can register for the one account and then you can click each fair that you wanna go into. So the next fair is actually coming up on the 29th which is next Sunday, all right? So they have over 303 colleges signed up and a number of live sessions, all right? So whenever you get a chance, you know, just take a look at that and you'll have some, some nice, wonderful information, all right? So these are the dates, um, but when you guys get a link for my uh, website, this information will actually be on there. So there are some schools that may have some um, tours and things like that, but most of the um, fairs again this year will be um, uh, virtual, okay? So maybe next semester there will be something different. And then also we have a financial aid night, okay? So that's coming up on Tuesday, October the 12th. 
And so financial aid night is a night where we have our representative from FIA, uh, which is our state aid agency that comes in and explains the whole financial aid process to you. So we normally have one session in English and we have the other session in Spanish, okay? Two totally separate sessions. So you don't have to worry about missing anything um, if you are a Spanish speaker. And so that will be from 6 to 8 p.m. And then on Tuesday, October the 26th, we will have financial aid completion night. And what that night entails is that we have someone from MOPCO coming who will actually help students fill out the application for FAFSA. So of course, you can go ahead and fill that out on your own. Um, but if you don't know what to do, you can come and we can sit there and help you. There will be a number of people who will be coming to help fill out that FAFSA with you, okay? So of course you'll get tons of reminders. Y'all know how I am with the reminders, okay? Now, let's get on to business. So what I would like for you guys to do is take a deep breath because we got you and we're not going to let you fail. It's been a lot of stuff going on with COVID and people, you know, being nervous or curious about what's going on with college, okay? But you guys are going to be fine. You know, I'm always down with the latest information. And as soon as I get that information, I always give it to you guys, okay? So just a couple of tips before we get into our presentation. Um, we talked about this already. Make sure you attend any virtual college tours that you hear about or that I send you because the more colleges that you check out and see what's going on there, it will help you kind of rule out some schools or discover some schools that you didn't know anything about, okay? We also will have something called, um, uh, you wanna participate in accepting student days that any colleges may have when you get accepted to the school. They may have something on campus or virtually that you can participate in. Participate in any open houses that they have, whether they're physical open houses or virtual, okay? And any one-on-one -on -one chit chats with the admissions officers from these colleges, okay? Um, you may want to include a report card with your transcript this year, but you probably don't need to because this is like the second year of, of COVID um, grades on your transcript. But you want to make sure that you build some relationships with the admissions counselors at these schools that you are really interested in once you get that information. Um, once you decide that this is a school that you want to put on your list, okay? You want to spend quality times with your essays, and we'll go into this later. You want to begin reaching out to your teachers now for letters of recommendations. It doesn't mean that they're going to write them right now, but if you give them some time, then they have some time to really focus on um, writing something really nice for you. Yesterday at our uh, in-service day, we actually had a rep from Chestnut Hill College and Kutztown come in and talk to the teachers and give them a lot of information about um, you know, what's going on with college planning right now, all right? You want to attempt to make a strong attempt to take two tests, whether it's the ACT or the SAT, it does not matter. So even though two thirds of these colleges are test optional this year, I still want y'all to take this test, okay? Still take it. Even if you're a person that's anxious about testing, just take it. And just know that if the school is test optional, you don't have to be stressed out about it, okay? Don't send your scores anywhere until you have a conversation with me or your counselor, just to make sure that it's a good score for you to send, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But don't send your scores. Now, some of you may hear from other people that you only have two or three weeks to send out your scores, or you can only send so many. But remember, you guys get fee waivers from the school. And when you get a fee waiver for the test, you can send your scores whenever you feel like it, and you can send them to as many schools as you want. So I don't want you to be, um, to hurt your application by sending test scores that aren't good, okay? All right, and then lastly, we got all this stuff here. 
We're gonna have college reps coming into our school this year, okay? So we're going to have virtual visits and we're gonna have in-person visits depending on what the rep is comfortable with. Um, so I have a 65 inch flat screen in my office that they just put in there right before we left. I'm not gonna say we're having Super Bowl parties in there, but y'all can start that rumor if you want to. Maybe we can do a little petition, have some snacks. I don't know, but we will have reps come. And so what this means, guys, is that this expands our reach or expands your reach. Because can I tell you guys something? You guys apply to the same 20 schools all the time. Did you know that there are thousands of schools across the country, right, for your colleges that you can discover? Now, some of them don't come to visit us because we're not uh, we're way out of their territory. But now that we have this um, virtual option, we're gonna start having people come from California and Florida, maybe England, maybe Ireland, maybe Africa, I don't know. But we have options now, okay? So let's make sure that we take advantage of that. Also, we also will be having something called Instant Decision Day, which is something that we probably have for the last 10 years. And so what that is, is that we have colleges come here um, to our schools, about maybe 15 plus colleges, and they come and interview you guys on the spot and you find out that day that you are accepted to that school. So most of the colleges, you're not gonna find out that you were accepted until January, February, March, but in this case, now you know early. So you definitely wanna take advantage of that and I'll be sending out that information, okay? Lastly, for those of you who are assigned to Mrs. Wiegand and also Mr. Morris, for the first month of school, if you are working on your applications and you need anything done regarding your applications, then you can just come directly to me. Now, I'm not saying that no one else can see me either, but they're new to our building. And so they're trying to learn some other stuff. So you can just make the appointments to see me. You can just kind of just skip right over them the first month of school, okay? Um, so just make sure that you do that, okay? I don't want you to get stressed out. All right. And then housekeeping, if you just popped on here, because there are a number of you that came on after we started, if you have any questions at all, you can put them in the chat. Make sure that you stay muted. But then at the end, we will open it up for questions and answers and you can unmute yourself and ask your questions. All right. Now I'm going to start talking faster because I put way too many slides in here. I'm going to try to skip over some of them. Okay. All right. So this is what we're going to learn tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about establishing timelines for your applications and financial aid, building a strong college list, becoming a standout candidate with college admissions officers, increasing your chances of receiving scholarships and other financial aid and financial aid basics now tomorrow night we're going to talk about financial aid the whole the whole time okay but tonight we'll do some basics okay i just see that there was a question in the chat oh you guys are still looking at the college fair screen lord have mercy that's so embarrassing why didn't y'all tell me Y'all miss all the fancy slides. But thank you, Gloria, for letting me know. All right, let me know. Can you guys see this now? <laughs> yep. I'll just show you everything that you missed. <laughs> you'll get the video. All right, so you'll get all of this information. Sorry about that, guys. Technology, right? Okay. So if you guys can do me this great favor in one word, describe your feelings about the upcoming year. One word, one word, drop it in the chat for me quickly, quickly. One word, stress, excited. One word, no judgment. Anxious, stressed, anyone else? 
even if somebody already said it, that's fine. All right, so everyone must feel the same way too. All right, we got stressed. One more, one more, because there's a lot of people in here tonight. One more, one more. All right, I'm sure that next person is coming. So what I can tell you is that I have a word here from a great philosopher, okay? Nervous. So a word from our great philosopher, Mr. Drake. Don't be nonstop in your feelings, all right? So it's normal to be stressed, it's normal to be nervous, it's normal to be anxious, especially after everything that you guys have been going through and just because you're seniors, but we got you, all right? So you guys did a great job because I know pretty much everyone on here, you guys did a great job participating in our um, senior year prep program last year. And there's probably a lot of stuff that you know that you don't even realize you know already, all right? So you're going to be fine, all right? You got this boo. That's my little quote that I put in there for you this morning, all right? Now, Naviance. Remember that you guys will be using Naviance to um, do your college planning. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I'm actually gonna have a workshop with you guys to show you guys how to pull this information up. Um, but we will be using Naviance in conjunction with the Common App. So your Common App, that's where you're gonna be doing some applications and listing colleges that you are going to apply to that are on the Common App. So just keep in mind, and we'll talk about the Common App a little bit later, the Common App has about, well, I'll talk about it now, 900 plus schools that you can apply to. You fill out one application and you can send it to um, a number of schools on there, up to 20 schools, okay? Um, but some of, every school is not on there. So some schools you're gonna have to go to their website and fill it out. But at some point you're going to connect Naviance and Common App together. So when you do that, your counselor will see that you have the application on there. And then once you have completed your application, you're gonna let your counselor know and your counselor will send your transcript from Naviance. Your teachers will load your letters of recommendations to Naviance, okay? So we'll talk about that in the session that we're gonna have in school, but just keep in mind that that's what we're going to do, okay? And so what I, only reason why I'm on here tonight is because if you wanna sign up for college visits, which I'm sure everybody on here will, um, you need to go into Naviance. So when you go into Naviance, it's going to look like this, but this year's background is purple. I didn't feel like doing all new screenshots if it looked the same, so just pretend that this is purple, okay? And so when you guys go in here, you're gonna see a home button, you're gonna see a colleges button, but on this main screen, it's gonna say my favorites. And then at the bottom, it's gonna say what's next, okay? Or what's new rather. So when you scroll to the bottom, it's gonna show you what's new in any colleges that we have signed up already to visit with you guys will be on this list. You can just keep scrolling all the way down. And so you can sign up for colleges. You just go in and you just click that you want to sign up for it. I don't think I have that slide on there, but you just click that you want to sign up for that school. And that's easy. I will see that your name is in there and I will sign you up. And there are three or four students that have already put colleges in there already. They have already signed up. So there is no limit to how many that you guys can sign up for. But if I see that you're just being a little bit too neurotic about it, then we'll have a conversation because I don't want you to spend a lot of time or wasting a lot of time going to schools that um, you really don't need to do that visit. But right now we have about 40 or 50 schools that are signed up, okay? And so I'll also have a little video that I'll send you guys out to show you actively, like I did last year, how to sign up for this, okay? But you wanna sign up for these college visits, especially the colleges that are on your list, all right? Okay. Now, 
We're going to go into the college application process, but does anybody have any quick questions before we moved on, before we move on? Because I want to make sure I don't run over time. Okay. So Layla says she's good. Ha ha ha. All right. All right. Well, I'll just keep watching that chat and we'll just keep going. All right. Now, when you guys come in and your counselors will have meetings with you and they're going to go over pretty much the same information. So when you're going through the process at our school, and it's going to be similar at other schools, your school counselor will be your primary contact because that person will be making sure that your um, transcripts are sent, that your teachers, if you tell them that you're waiting for uh, letters of recommendations from certain teachers that you're going to actually get them and load them in there. And so you need to make sure you stay in communication with them, okay? So they're gonna act as your primary, um, they're going to have planning meetings with you. After the meetings, if you want to set up individual meetings with them, you can. Um, they'll upload your uh, transcripts and letters of recommendations. Now, this is the thing right here, and I don't want us to get into a fight about this, okay? This is something that we do every year, and I'm going to explain why. Now, I know that a lot of colleges opened up their application process in August. And there are a few colleges that are actually processing applications now. This is the first year that they're able to do that as far as processing them early because a couple of rules have changed with the college admissions process as far as when they can start letting people know. I don't want you to get stressed out and think that if your information is not sent right now that you're going to miss out. We will not be sending out your transcripts for your applications until the third week of school. This is what we do every year. And the reason why we do that is because colleges want to see what your roster is in 12th grade. Well, because the schedule changes and how that whole process takes a couple of weeks, we don't want to keep uploading your transcript every time something changes. So we wait until there's a cutoff. Someone tells us that there are no more changes. Then we run your transcripts and then we upload them into Naviance. Now, if you want an unofficial copy, if you just want to have it for yourself or if you're going on a college visit or if you're meeting with a recruiter or something like that, we will happily give you a copy of your transcript. But as far as the official one that's being sent to the college, you're not going to get that until the third week of school, okay? And I'll send an email out about that. Also, your counselor will be helping you get registered for the SAT, the SACT, some light review of essays, blah, 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 um, and assist you with contacting colleges for random issues, okay? All right, my role. Um, I organize recruiter visits, organize campus tours, which we won't have any of those till next semester. Um, conduct the college fair, which we won't be having that this year either, but I will give you all the information about college fairs that are going on virtually. Okay, after group meetings, if you guys want to set up appointments with me, you can. And again, I know all of you on here, and so you know how I roll. Um, my calendar, there's a link to my calendar, and whatever you see open, if you want to take the appointment, is yours. If you want to meet with me every week, every two weeks, we'll have a conversation about that. And whatever you want to do, that's what we will do, whether it's a student, whether it's a parent, whoever, okay? I'm the person that actually uploads your transcripts into Navia. So again, that's going to be the third week of school. So again, you're going to start, if you've already started filling out applications, these colleges are going to be sending you these little harassing emails saying, we don't have your application. You're going to miss out. You're not going to miss out on anything, okay? They're doing their job and marketing their schools, okay? So just relax. Um, and you see the other things here will assist with other needs. I'll also help you guys as usual register for the SAT, ACT, um, contact colleges for you guys and communicate any special events and scholarship information. Okay. Now your responsibility because you have some too. All right. We highly recommend always that you and your parent or guardian put together a joint email address that you use for application, applications, and preferably 
make sure that it's not your school email because in June, after you guys graduate or maybe July, they will cut off your school email. You won't have access to it. So especially with your financial aid application, you don't want to use your school email. But if you guys can share an email address, for those of you who don't do well checking email, maybe your parent or guardian is the good one. Maybe you're the good checker. But between the two of you, you guys will catch emails that will be sent to you, okay? You want to contact your teachers for recommendations and allow them two to three weeks to write your letter. You can ask them the day before if you want to, but you're going to get a trash letter. It's going to be trash. Or you might not get one at all, right? So you want to give them a couple of weeks. There's something called a brag sheet that we're also going to give you guys where you can kind of talk about yourself. You and your parent or guardian can just put some information in there that will be helpful for your teacher to kind of jog their memory about, you know, the experience that they had in your class, okay? You want to keep your counselor updated on the schools that you intend to apply to. They're not going to magically know that you have finished your application on Naviance or other places, even though there is a button on Naviance that says request a transcript. For whatever reason, we never see it, okay? I need to check into that. But you need to send them an email and let them know that, okay? Um, you want to keep Naviance, your Naviance list updated. You want to keep track of your deadlines. Your counselors have a million things to do. They're not going to be able to keep track of your deadlines. And I'll also give you guys a little grid, a little schedule that can help you keep track of your deadlines too. But that's you guys' responsibility, okay? Um, and then you see the rest of the things there. But basically, all of this is saying is just to make sure you guys communicate with us, okay? And if you get any weird emails or something that you don't know about or you're not sure about, just send an email to one of us and we'll help you out, okay? All right. So now we are down to the application process. So what we would like for you guys to do is to compile a list of six to 12 schools. So a lot of you guys in our different workshops, you already started working on your list. You maybe had a list probably of maybe 30, 20 schools. You wanna get that list down to 12. Now you can apply to as many colleges as you want to. We're not gonna stop you. And if you apply to 100 schools, we'll send out 100 transcripts for you, right? And you may see people on social that have applied to all of these schools and that's fabulous. But you have to remember or realize that when you apply to all of these schools, that means that you are exerting energy towards all of those applications. Energy that you can be using to do something else, right? So maybe get your list of six solid schools that you want to apply to, okay? You want to do two public schools, or you want to put some public schools, some private schools, a community college. You also want to put, and I don't know if I have this on my slide or not, so make sure you write this down. I need you to put down two schools that you can commute to. And we'll talk about that in more detail tomorrow. Because a lot of times when students get their financial aid letters, there's a big gap of money that's left that they have to pay after they get all of their awards. And sometimes that can be about $10,000, $15,000. Well, that's how much room and board costs. Room and board means that's how much it costs for you to live on campus and eat on campus. And so if you have two schools that you can commute to and you are accepted to them, if you decide to commute, then it knocks off that ten dollars to $12,000, okay? All right, next bullet. You wanna schedule your final ACT and SAT, okay? You wanna make sure you do that. And just to also to give you a heads up, um, this meeting is from 6.30 to 8, so I don't want y'all to think at 7.30 I'm running over. It's from 6.30 to 8, okay? All right, you wanna make sure that you complete your applications, your Common App application, your coalition. I'll talk about that at the end. There's a slide at the end or you may have to apply on the school website. Now, you guys may see some messages when you're filling out your applications. Um, 
if you need some kind of a fee waiver, everyone here gets fee waivers for their applications, okay? So sometimes we have codes that we can give you, and sometimes there's this thing called the NACAC application that we can fill out and send on your behalf. So you should not be paying for any application fees. There may be some random school, but we can kind of work around that. So don't pay for anything, okay? And that's because you guys are getting the fee waivers for the SATs, all right? You want to make sure that you start working on your personal essays, guys, personal essays. And you want to put some time in for that. Spell check them, please. Spell check them, please spell check these essays. You want to write several drafts of your essays. Have multiple people look at these essays for you. Okay, because these essays are very, very important, especially because a lot of these schools will be test optional. And everybody just make sure if you can mute yourselves, because I can't um, catch my little link here to get everybody here. All right, there we go. So you guys want to make sure that your essays and your letters of recommendation, you know, are done well because of the fact that there are no test scores in a lot of these schools and so they're going to do something called holistic review which means that they're going to look at more than just your your test scores they're going to look at your extracurricular but those essays and letters of recommendations will give them a lot of information your resume extracurricular activities and i don't know if you guys know this but there are some of you who are not able to participate in extracurricular activities because you work, you have to work, or you have to babysit your siblings, you have to pick them up from school. I used to pick up my annoying sister after school every single day. There's a space on the common app for you guys to write that down and to go into detail about what you do after school. So you will not be penalized for that. So if that fits you, make sure that you reach out to me, reach out to your counselor so that we can help you word that and make sure that you take advantage of that section, okay? Then you also have a financial aid application that you guys have to do. That's the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow night. The FIA, I think it's the Pennsylvania Higher Education Association, I always get it wrong, but that's also um, financial aid. So we're gonna talk about that tomorrow night. And then the CSS profile, that stands for the College Scholarship Search. And so if you are applying to select private schools, um, that's where you're going to have to do that. I think there's about maybe 200, 250 schools that require that, okay? Scholarship applications. This is the other reason that I don't want you to apply to 30 schools, or as one of my friends say, 50, 11 schools because all of that extra energy that you are using to boost your ego, to shoot your shot at all these other schools, you can be using that same energy to fill out scholarship applications. This is the number one thing that seniors do poorly with across the board. You don't fill out scholarship applications, but we'll talk about that tomorrow night. So y'all need to come tomorrow night because I've said tomorrow night about 20 times, okay? College decision day is usually May the 1st. So you guys typically have until May 1st to, make, uh, to um, designate what school you want to go to. So even though you're getting your letter in November, December, they're gonna send you emails or letters saying, hey, you need to hurry up and drop your deposit or you may possibly you know, lose your status at this such and such and such a dorm. You can ignore those. Again, they're marketing. They want you to come there, right? And so they're, they're doing what they need to do. So typically you have until May 1st, but a couple of rules have changed. And so there may be some random schools that may set the deadline before that, but for the most part, it will be May 1st, okay? And you will have to drop a non-refundable deposit to hold your spot. And so that's the other reason why we want you to do things early. Okay. All right. So we talked about these fee waivers. You guys get fee waivers here at the school. 
because we're a part of the National Free Lunch Program. So if you are enrolled and physically attending Norristown Area High School, you will get a waiver. Testing, we talked about that a little bit. Two thirds of the schools will be test optional this year. So let me talk to you a little bit about how the testing, the test optional part works. Some schools are test optional, which means you can choose to submit the score or not to get into the school. This is the thing I want you guys to write down. There are some random schools that tell you that you don't have to submit the test scores to be accepted into the school, but if you want merit scholarships from that particular school, meaning that those are scholarships that are based off of your grades, your extracurriculars and stuff like that, some of those colleges still want the score for that. So that's why you wanna reach out to them and ask them. I'm also compiling a list of those schools as well. Some schools are test flexible, which means they may say, oh, you don't have to do the SAT, we'll take your AP, or we'll take this, or we'll take that, okay? So you just wanna ask those questions, but most of the people have it on their site. But this website, if you can write this down, fairtest.org. Fairtest.org has a list of colleges that are test optional. So when you go on the site, you just scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen and it'll have a list of colleges there and you can put them in alphabetical order by the alphabetical order or you can put them in order by state. Okay, so you can see all of the schools that are test optional. If you don't see your school there, it doesn't mean that they're not test optional. It just may mean that they didn't put it on the list yet. So then you wanna go to their website and see, okay? Any questions so far? Cause you guys are really quiet tonight and I'm just doing a fantastic job. So let me see here. Um, can you put that website here? I sure can. I'm supposed to anyway, right? <laughs> So it's fairtest.org, okay? And this site is legit. This site has been around for a long, long time, okay? All right, so now we're gonna talk about college fit. All right, so can you guys do me a quick favor? Can you drop in the chat what schools are on your list and why? Very quickly, some schools that are on your list. Drop them in the chat. All right, the Culinary Institute of America, that's a nice one. So Jalen, are you going to be a chef or are you gonna do baking and pastry? Boston University, a chef. All right, so Jalen, what is your signature dish? If we come over to your house and you're going to cook us something, what are you making for us? What is your thing? George Washington University because of location and major. Okay. Bucknell's College of Engineering. Arcadia and Assignments because they're close to have area study. Also, Trevor, you want to make sure that you go on... Um, their website, they have two programs at Bucknell. One is called Journey to Bucknell, and I cannot remember what the other one is, that you may be able to do like an overnight trip or something. So check that out. Because of COVID, they might not have it, but they used to have it. Okay? All right. So those are some pretty interesting schools. University of the Sciences, I want to major in biology. So Anur, I think the University of the Sciences is merging with a school. I don't know if it's Thomas Jefferson. Uh, but you want to check into that. They're merging with someone, okay? Montco, Cost and Temple. Yep. St. Joe. Okay, so they're merging with St. Joe's. Okay, Layla on the stats, okay? And Maddie. They're trying to take my job. Okay, so maybe, Anur, maybe you want to talk to um, Layla and Madeline. You know, they're in the know, I see. So you guys have some pretty nice choices there. So I wanna make sure that you guys also check out these other options that are here nationally, okay? So these are the reasons that a college should not, should not be on your list. You are name brand shopping. The parties are lit. All of your friends are there. Your bay is there. 
And if I can just focus on that point right there, there's nothing worse than breaking up with someone and being stuck seeing them for four years. I'm just saying. Okay, so don't go there just because somebody you really like is there. Um, the school does not have your major. Your grades and SAT scores or ACT scores are nowhere close to what they are looking for. Can't tell you how many students pick schools and they don't even have their major. Okay, so these are the reasons that the college should be on your list. Your grades and GPA are in the range of last year's class. So when you guys are looking at some of these websites, which I'm going to send you some information about um, the websites, okay? Um, to, you want to look to make sure that they usually tell you that the middle 50% of the students that they accepted last year got this grade point average. So it doesn't mean that if you don't have that grade point average, you're not going to get in. It just means that if this is 100%, this is the middle 50%. Okay, so that's what that number is. Now, I will give you a heads up. When you guys look at the SAT scores and ACT scores on websites this year, those scores are inflated. So when I say inflated, what do you guys think that means and why do you think it's inflated? So those scores are inflated. They will be inflated this year. What do you think that means and why do you think the scores are inflated? That chat is slow. So I'm just going to tell you. Curved? No, not curved. They will be higher because schools are test optional. Absolutely. Since schools were test optional last year, that means that only people who had good scores sent them in. So the people who got like 500s and 600s and 700s and 900s, those scores were not averaged in. So everyone's scores will look higher than they really are. So let's not pay so much attention to that because I've also been asking colleges, how are you coming up with that score? Is this a school that, I mean, are you, is this based off of this past year's class, the class before, three years ago, or average, and they're all telling me different things. So don't get distracted by the scores that you see on their websites because they will put those on there, okay? And here you see some other reasons why these schools should be on your list. Definitely because they have your major. That's the reason why you're going to college. Well, that's the reason you're supposed to be going to college, but I'm not gonna get in your business but you wanna make sure that they have your major. And so your major is the major course of study that you will be taking. If you wanna go into culinary, if you wanna go into engineering, that's what your major is, okay? Now, some of you don't know what your major is, and that's fine too, because actually the number one major is called undecided or exploratory studies, okay? And so, um, but if you can maybe narrow it down to your favorite subject or two, that will help you out. And there's some um, options on College Board. They have a really nice thing called Big Future on there that can help you define some things. And Naviat has something as well, okay? But you see all of these other things that are here um, that you really should be paying attention to to make sure that the college is a good fit for you. Because if the college is a good fit for you, it will increase the chances of you staying there. Because if you end up transferring to another college, it's not like transferring to another high school. If you come to Norristown from another high school, we have to take all of your credits. Colleges don't have to do that. And it could be possible that you go to a school, it's not the right fit for you, you transfer out, and instead of you being a sophomore, you may be a freshman again. Okay, so I mean, sometimes it's unavoidable. People do transfer, but the better you do at putting together your fit, it will increase the chances of you staying. And that's something that we can work on one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So again, when you put this list together, you wanna put one to two REACH schools on your list. Those are two schools that you don't really meet the criteria, but it's close. Okay, so they're looking for a 3.5 and you have a 3.3, but you maybe have 
a number of quality extracurricular activities. And since I just said extracurricular activity and I said the word quality, some of you guys are so competitive and you have these long lists of extracurricular activities. There's no way you can do all of the things that you're doing and stay sane. Okay. They're looking for quality activities. So if you have been an officer, if you have been in it for a while, if you're on a committee, if you, you know, work in that extracurricular activity several times a week or several times a month, those are the things that they are looking for. Okay. Now, so those are your top choices, but less likely to be accepted. But, you know, we're going to shoot our shot. If you're close, go for it. Two to four target schools. They match your needs, wishes, and you would be happy to attend. And before I move to the next one, because I don't want to forget, I need you also to do this, okay? And I need you to write this down and put like a little star by it. Do not put any schools on your core list of 6 to 12 that you would not attend, okay? Because what happens is when you guys get your acceptance letters, later you're also going to get letters from financial aid. And it's very possible that some of the schools that you have been accepted to after you guys crunch the numbers, it's not going to be affordable for you. And so sometimes students really only have one or two schools that they really like on the list. And they're just throwing the other things on the list because we told them to or we asked them to. And then it gets in a situation where they have all these schools on the list that they don't, they're not interested in. So just don't put them on your list as your core six to 12, okay? That'll save you a lot of headache later, okay? And one to three safety schools. And so that means you have a little chance of rejection. So again, we want to do a mix of your state, private, community college. Okay. These are some quick samples. We went over this in the last program. So some examples of public or state colleges is Kutztown, IUP, Cheney, Westchester. I keep forgetting to change this grade point average range. The GPA range should be 2.3 and up preferably 2.8. Once you go below a 2.3 grade point average, um, they're going to have to throw some Hail Marys and all kinds of stuff. They're going to conduct all kinds of investigations to see if they're going to let you come to their schools. All right. So I'm not going to say if you have a 2.3, you're not going to be able to get in, but it's going to be a little tight for you. Okay. 23,000 is about the average for tuition, which is how much you pay for your classes, room, which is where you live, and board, which is eating, okay? Now we have four state-related or state-affiliated colleges. That's Temple, Penn State, University of Pittsburgh, and Lincoln University, okay? So and let me go backwards. The public schools get money from the state of Pennsylvania to cut down the cost, okay? State-related colleges get some money from the state, but they're going to be more expensive than the public colleges, okay? And then your private colleges, they don't get any money from the state to, op to offset costs. Now they get money from the state and the federal government as far as grants and loans, but they don't get any money from the state as far as the colleges giving it to the school, okay? Now you see these price tags on here, $35,000, $70,000. So if you have already passed out and you're laying on your floor, I don't know if we need to get the smell and salt, maybe a defibrillator, please don't call 911. These are called sticker prices. Most people are not paying this money to go to the schools. It's a sticker price. Also, I don't want you to take the school off the list if it seems like it's too expensive. Again, once you put that list together and this school on here that seems like a great fit for you, keep it on the list. You have a list of six to 12. Because if I can tell you a secret, which is not so secret, is that private schools have a lot of scholarship money to give out. And so sometimes when you do the math, it may be actually more affordable for you to go to the private school then it is for you to go to the public school, especially if your grades are really good, okay? So keep that list on 
the school on your list, okay? And I'm looking in the chat, I don't see any questions here so far. Community college, this is a great option for students as well. So we have uh, Montgomery County Community College, Northampton Community College, and Philadelphia Community College are the three popular ones that students from our school apply to. Of course, Montco is going to be your most ideal option because it's in the county. Once you go outside of the county, you're going to have to pay more. And if you go to Northampton Community College, some people like to go there because they have housing. But again, some people's reasoning for going to the community college is to cut costs. And if you're going to go to Northampton and stay on campus, that's going to increase your fee. But for some students, they may want to get away and that's a good option for them. Okay. And then lastly, your trade or technical schools, your Thaddeus Stevens, your UTI, your Empire Beauty Schools. There are usually no GPA requirements, but they ask you a whole bunch of other things that they require, and their fees vary. Most of them do not have housing, but some do. Okay, so you want to check those out, but they do accept financial aid from the government. Okay. Demonstrated interest, you'll hear a lot about that. Um, and basically what that means is that colleges want to see some things that are going to make you stand out, okay? So if you meet recruiters at these college fairs, whether they're virtual or in-person, if it's a school that you're interested in, make sure you stay in contact with the recruiter. Respond to emails to schools that are important to you. Now, if you keep getting spams from places that you don't want emails from, please go in and just unsubscribe, block them, or send them an email and just nicely tell them that you're not interested, okay? Because those things are gonna fill up your box. But if we have a school that you're interested in and they're coming for instant decision day because I'll be sending you guys out information about that, you wanna go to that. Those interviews are not like um, job interviews in corporate America, they're very, laid back like I'm talking to you right now. Could be a couple of jokes, they'll tell you things about the school, and it's a great opportunity. Um, visit your college fairs, make sure you have copies of your transcript when you go to these things, and if any of you have any honors or advanced placement classes on your roster, that stands out for you because it has what's called rigor on your transcript. That is what colleges want to see. They want to see that you're doing something other than going to school, eating lunch, and going home. They want to see that you're involved in extracurricular activities, that you're challenging yourself to take some honors and AP courses. So don't just be comfortable with getting A's in regular classes. If you can stretch yourself out there and take some honors and AP for the underclassmen on here, go ahead and do that. Okay, some of you guys may be able to set up actual interviews at some of these colleges now where they may not have allowed you to do it before. Okay, and again, we're going back to these essays. These essays are so important. Okay, and then some of you may decide that you want to do early action or early decision. Okay, because unfortunately, a lot of schools will take a majority of their class via early action or early decision. So basically what that means, if you're going early action, you're applying early. The deadline may be November 5th, I'm sorry, November 1st, November 15th, December 1st, or December 15th as their applicant pool for that. You can get accepted early, but you don't have to make a commitment. But the earlier that you apply, like in October, November, then if they have any merit scholarship money to give out, that's when you get that money. So that's the other reason why you want to apply early and not wait until the actual deadline of February 1st, February 15th, March. You want to go ahead and get that out of the way. And we even recommend that you have all your, your applications done by Thanksgiving. Okay, so you can relax a little bit and focus on those scholarship applications and just enjoy senior year, okay? Early decision means that you're going to apply at one, at one of those early dates, but if you do get accepted, you it's binding. You're committed to go there. So we really don't recommend that most of our students do early decision because if you're going to commit to go there, that means that you should be able to afford to go there. So we want to have conversations with you one-on-one -on -one if that's a choice that you want to make, okay?
All right. These are some other college fairs that may be coming up that you will um, get email communications or Instagram posts from me about. So the NACAC National College Fair was the one we talked about first. Performing and Visual Arts Fair is connected to the National College Fair. The Malcolm Bernard HBCU College Fair um, normally comes to our area in November. Okay, so anybody who's interested in going to any historically black colleges and universities, that will be something. Meet the Mac College Fair. So we have a lot of um, colleges in Pennsylvania that are private that have their own fair. So you can keep your ears out for that. And then the Pashi College Fair. Um, that's the Pennsylvania Consortium of Colleges, okay? So they also have their own fair. So we haven't received any dates, but there are so many opportunities. And at the Malcolm Bernard, the Meet the Mac, and the Pashi, they also do virtual interviews during their fair. So that's another opportunity for you guys to get accepted early. So Malcolm Bernard, again, usually takes place in November. Meet the Mac is going to be November or December, and Pashi is going to be December, okay? Lastly, I think this was the last couple of slides that I had. Some of you guys may be student athletes and you're playing division one or division two sports in college, or that is your plan. You have to go on the eligibility center's website and fill out an application, okay? So if you played any AAU or any kind of organized sports outside of school, you wanna sit down with your parent of guardian, go over some dates, of when you did this and when you did that to make sure that you're, um, you have all your stuff filled out there. There's going to be a $75 fee. We're not paying the $75 fee because remember you get fee waivers. So just email me <coughs> and I will upload that fee for you. And then I will also upload a transcript for you. Okay. So if you plan on playing division one or division two sports in college, you have to have a minimum of a 2.3 grade point average, not a 2.3 on our scale. They're gonna take your transcript, convert it to their scale. They're gonna take out all of your electives and that needs to be a 2.3, okay? And then at the end of the year, we'll upload your final transcript for them as well, <coughs> okay? I don't know what the rule is about their scores. I know the last two years, um, they haven't been much sticklers for your test scores, but we'll see what they're going to do this year, okay? And then the last thing here, these are three types of applications that you guys can use for school. So you have the Common App, which everybody hears about. That's the one that has 900 plus colleges. You fill out one application, but it is long. One application and then you can apply to up to 20 schools with that one. You have the Common Black, uh, Common Black College application. These are for students that are planning on applying to historically Black colleges and universities. You do not have to be an African-American student to apply to an HBCU. They've just been around for a long time, and they're not going to close. So this application, you pay $20 and then you can apply to as many schools as you want to. So these students that you hear about that are applying to 50 and 100 schools, this is one of the ways that they do that too. <clears throat> and then a newer application called the Coalition for CollegeAccess.org. I think it may be 90 plus schools on that list. And so you can use that too. Not a lot of people use this one, but some people do from our school. All right, and that's all I have for you before we start taking questions. So again, if you came on here a little bit later, I'm going to put this um, in the chat for you. If you can fill out this questionnaire for me, it will really help me um, help you as far as the college application process. Again, there are some personal questions in there that are not too intrusive, but you're probably gonna be like, why is she asking me these questions? Some of those questions are gonna be on your financial aid application. And so if I know some of this stuff ahead of time, I can help you put together a better list and better guide you, okay? So I just put that link in the chat for you. You can take a picture of it too, do your little QR code thingy. And that's it. All right, so now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And if you guys have any questions at all, it's dark in here now, it wasn't dark in here when I started. 
let me turn my light on. But if you guys have any questions at all, start asking those questions or dropping them in the chat. I'm just going to go turn my light on real quick. All right, so you guys can drop your questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Do you know when we're going to get our um, schedules for our senior year? Mm -mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, we just had a meeting about that today. So they're going to be emailing you soon. It might not be till Friday or Saturday. They're not trying to terrorize you guys. It's just they had to make some adjustments, you know, because of summer school and a whole bunch of other things that happened with the schedule that they were trying to do to make sure that they could fit everything in for you. Um, so it may not be until Friday or Saturday that you hear something, but just check your email between Friday and Sunday. The new assistant principal that does scheduling will send out an email. We just had a meeting about that today. Okay. So again, we're okay. not cool to you guys. Thank you. What is financial aid night at the school again? Uh, financial aid night is going to be Tuesday, October. Let me look at my phone. Tuesday, I think it's October the 12th. And I will send out some information for you guys. I'm working on that this week to get you something that has a cheat sheet on it. Um, I think it's October the 12th. Yep, it's Tuesday, October the 12th. So that's when we have the person from FIA that's gonna come and talk to you guys about financial aid. And then on October the 26th, which is also a Tuesday, we're gonna have someone from MOTCO come and help you guys fill out your financial aid application if you need help with that. So you can do it on your own. People do it on their own. But people like me who are like hands-on visual people, sometimes we want people to stand next to us and help us out. So we'll stand next to you and help you out. We may give you some snacks depending on what they say rules are. Um, so that's gonna be up in the library and also probably downstairs in one of the art rooms, okay? That's in the evening, is that correct? Oh, yes, ma'am. It'll be, I think it's gonna be from 5.30 to 9.00. And that's 5.30 to 9 for both of them, for the 12th and the 26th? No, that financial aid night would be a little shorter than that. It might be like 6 to 8. So what I'll do is I'm going to put something out for you guys. And let me show you something else, too, because I didn't know if I had time to show this to you. So I just didn't do it because sometimes I get squirreled. <laughs> All right, let me show you guys this really quickly. Yes, it's the 12th and the 6th. All right. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. What does it say? NHS College and Career Center. All right, I just had to make sure. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't my Netflix movie I was watching before you guys came on here. Um, so I'm going to give you guys this link. Um, this is a core link that you want to bookmark because if you're looking for any information, it is going to go here. Okay. All right. That's right, Layla. So, um, this is the college and career center website and it has some information here about what the college and career center does. Um, there's some information here at the bottom, my contact information, Layla, please drop in the chat or tell me, remind me to talk about the school profile because I'm going to forget. That's something that's really important, okay? Um, there's a tab here for colleges that accept our students. So these are the students in the top 10 from last year and um, a number of colleges that our students get accepted to. Of course, every college that students get accepted to is not on here, but these are some common ones or some interesting ones that kind of stand out. You'll see that. 
you have information here about the college and career on uh, the the uh, guidance office here so these are your counselors we're waiting on a picture from mr mars so we'll put that up here next week i have to check to make sure i did the right things but this is this should be the appropriate alphabet the current alphabet for each person and we'll get a picture of Miss Wigan. We'll be putting that in here. All right, and then at some point, if they start taking electronic appointments, we'll also put those links in here as well, okay? Um, let me go here first. All right, um, any upcoming events? This is the most important page as far as I'm concerned because this will be updated every week of any activities that this office is doing, or if there's some other things that people are doing that's connected to what we're doing or outside of school. So it has information in here about testing, upcoming events. This is that big college fair that I was telling you guys about with 500 dates is right here. And then these are some other college expos that are going on outside of us. Um, it's Latino College Expo or HBCU College Fair. They have separate dates in different cities. I'm kind of mad right now because I didn't see Philadelphia on the list. So I'm going to email this lady. She's probably going to ignore me. But I mean, they didn't even have, you know, New York is going to be the closest place. So you can go to any of these. It's just probably that colleges that are closer to these areas, that's pretty much who's going to be there. Okay. But any upcoming events that I have going on, that's going to go there. Okay, and then there's some other resources here. You have um, your countdown to graduation timetable. This is going to be something at every grade. It's a checklist that you can look at to see where you should be, what you're doing. This right here is pretty much everything that I talked about and a bunch of stuff that I didn't mention because your counselors are going to go over this. But just in case you missed the beginning or you didn't take great notes, this is your senior timeline of things that you should make sure that you're looking at. I know this looks extensive, but it's not as bad as it, it looks, okay? All right, before Layla reminds me, I didn't forget. Your school profile, nobody ever talks about this, okay? And I see two questions in the chat, so let me see that they are before I go, okay. The school profile, every high school for the most part has this. This is kind of like a synopsis of what the school is. So it's gonna talk about the community that they're in, how many students go there, what the area of Norristown is like, um, the history a little bit, um, tells us a little bit, tells people about our school, uh, what kind of uh, sports programs we have, what our ethnic makeup is, you know, what grades we offer, all that kind of stuff. It also has information here about the administrators at the administration building, the principals here. So this again is last year's profile. I'll be updating this in the next two weeks because this also gets loaded into Naviance. So before I go into the details of this, colleges use this profile to assess your transcript. So you're not competing against Lower Marion. You're not competing against Methacton. You are competing against Norristown. Not other Norristown students, right? But on the second page of this profile, remember before I go there, because I get squirreled, we also are gonna have some more information here about COVID, how we handled your grades. Um, so we have information here for the first year of COVID. So we're going to put an update here so that colleges will know what we did. Like for instance, um, Pottstown, they did pass fails the first year. We didn't do that. Okay. So on their thing, they put that they put pass fails there. Okay. This also talks about the curriculum, how we do our grading, how we do our class rank, what our grading scale is, all that kind of stuff. This is the main point that I want you to pay attention to, especially for the juniors and sophomores that are on here. They are going to look to see how many classes we offer as far as AP, weighted honors, and dual enrollment classes. So advanced uh, weighted honors classes are advanced classes, you know, if you want to get a little bit more rigor. Advanced placement classes 
are classes that are above the honors classes. They're more like college level classes and you get extra weight to your grade point average because you're doing more work. And then dual enrollment classes, which we don't have yet, those are college classes that you can actually take at Mopco or one of our teachers may teach that and you also get weighted credit for that. So the colleges are gonna look to see what types of advanced classes that you had access to and how many you took advantage of. So they're not expecting you to have taken all of these classes that are here, but if you're trying to get into Villanova and you took two honors classes and they see that you've had access to like 40 classes and maybe you could have taken five or 10 and you only took two, that's where the kind of issue comes in as far as them assessing rigor. So again, they're not comparing you against other schools. They're looking to see what you have access to. Now, there are some schools that don't have AP classes, that don't have honors classes, but they may have access to dual enrollment classes through the community college. So they're not going to get penalized because they didn't take any because their school does not offer any, okay? So this is just something that I want you guys to be cognizant of when they're assessing your application, okay? They also will take into consideration that our school is a Title I school. So we get funds for the state because of our, um, our economic standing, our diversity standing, a whole bunch of other you know, test scores and things like that. And so again, they're looking to see what we have access to, what our limitations are, you know, and what we may not have access to. So what we do and do not have access to. So they take these things into consideration when they are evaluating your application. And then lastly here, we have like a sample list of colleges that you guys are accepted to, your SAT scores, ACT scores, and special programs um, and things like that. So does anybody have any questions about this profile? And this is on the website too. Okay, since the weight scale changed for the class of 2023, will colleges know it's different for class of 2022? Yes. So that's going to be here. I'm going to be working on this next week. Yep, so this is going to come off. And then this is the new grading scale right here. And so you guys should have the same grading scale as 2022, correct? Or did yours change again? I think it should be the same. Okay. So again, I'll be looking into the, program of, uh, into the program of studies that you guys have and making those corrections. And so this will get loaded up into your Navion screen too. So again, you guys have access to this from that link that I gave you on the website. Okay, they kept hours where the last class with the old one. Okay. So what will happen is I usually have a meeting with, um, with Mr. Roth the person does scheduling and somebody else just to look over all of this to make sure it's all correct and that we have the correct grading scales and stuff in there so it'll be fine okay all right what other questions do you guys have you can unmute yourself or you can drop them in the chat because we're done for today And I know there are a couple of you on here. I didn't talk about this in detail. If you received an email from me about the QuestBridge program, that program is for students that have, um, that are in the top 10% of the class um, and meet some other criteria to get a full um, scholarship for some top tier colleges, you need to get started on that application. Application ASAP is due by September 28th and it is long. So if you did the summer application for the summer program, it actually rolls right over into the new one so you don't have to retype it, okay? So definitely I'm gonna you know, send you guys a message again to meet with you just to make sure that it gets done because a lot of people wait until the last minute to do it and then their application is trash, okay? So we don't want that. We wanna get this free ride, okay? Because there's not a lot of free rides out there anymore. We'll talk about that more tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, again, if you weren't on here earlier, uh, we're going to go over everything financial aid tomorrow. Okay. 
Any other questions? Because if not, I'm going to turn the recording off. And then if you guys have any other questions that you don't want to go on the recording, or if you need to ask something on the side when everybody leaves, you can do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and just leave a message for anybody who's watching. So thank you for coming to College Application Crash Course Part 2. We'll have Part 3 tomorrow night. So we hope you enjoyed this recording and you have a great night.